I'm going to kit bash a master of executions based on this skull taker. And we're going to start with a look at the actual sprue of the skull taker. Now this cloak is what I love. That is fantastic for a master of executions for Korn. And I like his lower legs as well, because these two, I think if you could glue them together, you have a pretty good flat surface that you can put a space marine torso on top of. And I, I want to make him look like a space marine, not like a demon. He needs to be a master of executions, not just some demon with a big axe. I love the base and it's the right base size, so that one we're keeping, but I don't like this sword. Uh, it needs to be a massive chain axe, in my opinion. If it's corn, that's what it has to be. Now maybe I can do something with the chest piece, maybe I can do something with the head, but I don't think so. Again, too much demon, not enough space marine. I'm gonna go dig through some bits that I have left over, and I think I'm gonna use something like this from the World Eaters, from the 8 bound. A big, big chain axe, and maybe shoulder pads from there as well, and then some legionnaire chest pieces, something like this, or something like that, where I can snip off little bits of pieces and glue it onto the legs. Let's take a look. I'll just start clipping and we'll continue from there. Okay, my original idea is not going to work out and I'll show you why. So I got the base here, uh, with legs on the base. And if I show you this uh, legionnaire's chest piece, you'll see immediately what the problem is. It's way too small. <laughs> It'll look like it has massive legs and then a skinny little dude, too small a chest piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm instead going to attach the original piece of the skull taker. And then I'm gonna start making him a little bit more human by giving him a, a proper helmet. And I'm going to snip off these arms and glue on some of the uh, eight bound arms to give him chain access. So we'll do that now. But first let's take a look at the cloak and where it fits so I know exactly where to cut. Now the cloak goes kind of under his left arm and then attaches here to the back. So it's safe to cut off most of this arm over here. And then I can use one of these World Eaters arms like this one give him a nice big chain axe and then cover up the cut with a shoulder pad. And if you notice beforehand that you're going to cover it up with a shoulder pad, you can work much rougher and there's less risk of you making a mistake and ruining the whole conversion. So now I know I'm gonna cover up that cut. I can sort of clip and work around with it. I don't have to be perfect. And that helps a lot when you're kit bashing. Knowing what you're gonna cover up later is gonna make it so much easier because you can cheat and you can leave ugly cuts in there that nobody's gonna see ever. So a quick cut later, I'm just gonna scrape these a little bit flat and you'll see what I mean. If I put this arm, nice left arm on here, it doesn't look great like this, but if I add the shoulder pad, let's get it in the arm properly. Uh, where is that? Oh, there we go. Like that, nobody's gonna see the cut that I made. It looks perfectly fine. Even if you look under the arm, it will look fine like that. Now on the other side, I want to use this second axe. I think a dual wielding master of executions with, with chain axes is something that Korn would appreciate. So I'm just gonna make his pose like this. And that means I have to cut off this arm as well. I'm just gonna measure again with this cloak and it doesn't really attach to the arm. Like there's a little bit going under the arm, but it doesn't attach to the arm. So I can just snip this off as well. And I'm gonna get some proper purchase over here and snip this off. And whatever, if it doesn't look good, I cover it up with another shoulder pad. So let me clean this up. Let me get the arms in place and then I'll show you how I clean it. I cover up everything with shoulder pads. So here we are with the arms attached. Take a look. I tried to keep a similar pose as the original mini. So one weapon up in the air and the other hand a bit lower because it also goes well with the rest of his pose. Uh, the left leg forward with the left arm back. That's sort of a natural way of standing. Now up here, you can see I glued the cloak in place already. But first let's hide these gaps over here. And with the eight bound uh, shoulder pads, you need to scrape this little nub out of the shoulder pad because normally this nub goes into the hole over here in the arm but now it won't fit on there perfectly so you need to get rid of that so and then i'll glue them on and i'll show you the results now we come to the head and there's a few issues but first take a look at these shoulder pads look how much they cover up how easy it is to put them on there and you don't see any gaps and holes anymore between the arms and the shoulders and that's one of the biggest tricks in kit bashing is figuring out how you can cover up all the joints that you stick together now, for the head, I'm using this Berserker helmet and there's a few issues with it. Number one, the World Eaters Berserker kit comes with 10 helmets, a bunch of bare heads, but only 10 helmets. So if you have a World Eaters player who wants helmets everywhere, 
You're gonna have a bit of trouble finding one of these, but try to convince your World Eaters player to at least use one regular head and you can get the leftover helmet. Uh, another issue is that that neck is way too wide and way too high for this to just slap on there. I'm gonna have to cut some of this off. And the third issue is I was so focused on getting this arm on right that I didn't consider the space I need for the helmet here. And so I'm gonna have to figure something out, see if I can shave off enough of the neck to put the head a little bit lower, sort of between the shoulders like this, or if I can figure something else out. Maybe a bit of green stuff will work here. I'm just gonna see what I can do, and then I can use this chest piece to sort of cover up whatever ugly piece I left there. So that's from the front at least, and from the top, it's not that visible that I've been hacking and sawing over here. So let's first just get the clippers and start hacking away. So I tried out a few things. First of all, the head is scraped flat so that it sits better on that neck, but we still have the issue that the horns of the helmet get into contact with the ax, and there is no way it keeps flying away. More trouble than you would think, uh, Zerker helmet. But there's no way that this fits over here. And so we're gonna go the battle damage way, which means we're just gonna cut a piece off. So I'll cut this piece off over here, make a nice angle, something like that, and try again. And now I actually have the space to maneuver the helmet and place it however I like. Another issue now are these hoses on the side of the helmet, so I'm gonna get rid of those as well. And I think I actually quite like that because it gives the skull a bit more of a, sorry, it gives the helmet a bit more of a skull look. Because now, if you look at the faceplate, I shape this off and it will look more like skull with horns rather than those pipes around his neck. And let me just uh, clean out this up and we'll continue. So his head is on there and the back looks good, but the front had a little gap. So I'm already working with some green stuff. I cut it off, left it for a few minutes, and now I'm gonna sculpt it in there. And I'm using these uh, silicon brushes from Green Stuff World, and they're perfect. If you wanna work with green stuff or any other sculpting, you gotta get these tools, because they're great. You can make them wet. I just have a cup of water here. I just dip in the, the silicon brush, and then I can just sculpt this in there. Now, I want to make this look not too much like a massive neck. So after it's in there, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna start cutting pieces off again. And I'll keep going like this. And so now there's a bit sticking out and I sculpt it back in there and I keep going and going and going like this until I have something resembling a neck. I'm afraid that his <laughs> neck is going to be too long like this. But I think, like I said before, I can cover that up with a little, little plate on the front. But let's first see how this goes. Now. It's pretty obvious that there's this massive green well, no, chunk there in his neck, but once it's sprayed, you'll see much less of it. I still feel this isn't finished yet. And I was talking about this chest plate, uh, to put it here, to sort of cover it up, but I feel it's too wide and I feel that I would have to cut off quite a lot to get it in there and cutting off these corners over here that would make it look really weird. So I think I'm going for a different solution and that's to just cover it up with some hobby chain. And that's a very easy solution. Chains always look good on any Warhammer miniature. So I just got some uh, super glue over here and I'll drop a little droplet there in the corner and kind of hang the chain into there. And then I'm just gonna do maybe one or two rounds of chain around his neck and I will cover it up neatly and after it's sprayed and painted you don't see anything of this and it will look way way better than it does now. I'll show you what it looks like after the chain has uh, glued in there. Now with the chain around his neck he might give a little bit of a Mr. T vibes over here but I think he looks cool like this. It covers up the green stuff, it covers up the neck, makes it look less weird and looks like it's more uh, chest than neck over here which makes his head sit on top of the neck much better. Time to spray him and we'll start painting him because I've got a really cool paint scheme for this one. And this is what I'm going to base my paint scheme on. This piece of artwork I think looks stunningly beautiful. And sadly, I don't know who the original artist is. Matthias Koros, that's the artist for this fantastic piece of art. And it's the cover of an expansion book, The Tome of Blood for Black Crusade, a 40K RPG game designed by Fantasy Flight Games. So the artist is Matthias Koros. Definitely worth a follow on Instagram, and I'll link his profile down below as well. But I think it's an amazing piece of World Eaters art. And as soon as I saw it, the first time I saw it, I knew I was going to paint some World Eater that way. And so I think this Master of Executions is the perfect model to do this. It also helps a lot by making this kit bash more of its own. L let, me, let me explain. Like If you have a model like this, 
it's pretty clear that the base is a corn demon and corn demons have red skin so if i don't paint it with red skin it becomes less obvious what the original mini was and it makes the kit bash a little more unique it makes it harder for people to see okay it's that bit and that bit and that bit all to smashed together and it's more its own miniature so the skin needs to stay white and the arm is going to be bright red with this purple in it I, I love the color that they've done instead of just blood red it's this sort of maroon with pinks with purples in there very worn very rotting and the absolute insanity of the space marine is shown as well so I'm first going to start with some Leviathan purple and it's slightly watered down so that it becomes even brighter and I'm just going to cover all the armor plating like this and I'm not working so neat I know I'm hitting all bits of the trim that I shouldn't be hitting but my idea is if I paint the lower part the recessed part first then I can clean up the armor trim later and this way also because the miniature sprayed white you want to make sure you get all the nooks and crannies of your armor otherwise you have a white bit sticking out right there so this thin layer will be nice and purple based to start with and then next up i'm going to stipple all over the purple with screamer pink uh, this is a nice bright reddish pink and i think if i stipple lightly enough it'll hide much of the purple and it will start adding a little bit of red in there and if you look at the artwork i'll show it here again you can see that his armor is really flaking off, like the, the paint is coming off and there's a layer underneath and that's really what I want to, want to get done as well. Right? But that's why I'm going to have to do a lot more stippling with a lot more different paints. But yeah, next up is uh, for the stippling is corn red, because you can't paint followers of the blood god without the paint of the blood god. Well, one of the paints of the blood god. And this again, stippling everywhere and trying to not cover up everything. I'm trying to hit some of the purple parts again because in the end I want to get rid of as much of the purple as possible and only have it like deep in the recesses where there's something shining through and instead just get to that sort of, I don't know, how do you describe that color in the artwork? Maroon, pink, it's not really red, it's not really blood red, so I, I really love the color. But I think I'm going to have a hard time replicating it here. But I think with the stippling, I'll get pretty close to both the color and the sort of look and feel of the miniature. And that's really, that's how I like to paint. I go for look and feel. I don't really go for perfectly detailed. I want it to look cool from, let's say, half a meter away. And especially cool when it looks on the tabletop. I want people to look at this thing and go, yeah, that is a corn master of executions. Next up, Mephiston Red from those other friends of the Blood God. And again, stippling, trying to get all those purple bits out of the armor and really only leaving this little bit of an outline, like this skull over here. It can do with a little bit more red on the spots where it's purple, but I think this looks cool. And this comes pretty close to the, the artwork. It still needs a bit of work, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Next up, pink horror. Uh, it's way too light, way too pink, but I think after this, I can fix all of it, blend it all together and get it close to the artwork with the next paint, which is Contrast Doomfire Magenta. And this is exactly that magenta that you see in the artwork as well. And I've diluted it a lot. This is almost 50-50 contrast paint and water. And I'm going to try and get this into the recesses a little bit and cover over some of the stippling, but not everywhere. I'm almost using a stippling motion with this brush as well to not get everything looking the exact same. But I want to use this to get into the recesses, cover up a little bit more of that purple and to go over that bright pink horror that I just stippled on. Because then after that, it will dry up and it will shine through some of that rough uh, texture in the background, but it will also pull all of these colors, the purples, the corn red, all of it, the pink, more towards the maroon that you see in the in the artwork. And let's see how this works. This is the first time I'm painting this. I haven't done this before. I just had this in my mind. I think this will get me close to the artwork. And let's let it dry and see the results. You can always fix it if it doesn't work out. But yeah, let's take a look. And I think he looks really good, better than I expected. I love the difference in the color, the speckliness of it. I think it comes really close to the artwork. It might need a little bit of rust here and there, but I've already started doing some of the Rune Lord brass because if you put a different color next to the existing color, it might start to look differently. And so it's important to get this Rune Lord brass on there now because then I have a better idea of what this maroon is really going to look like. And it will give a better idea of what the contrast between the colors does with the colors. And yeah, this is a very tedious process. Painting armor trim is 
It's probably why I don't really have a Chaos uh, army, or at least a Black Legion army. I do have my Death Guard. But there's less armor trim over there. But yeah, let's uh, let's do this trim first and then we'll see. Okay, that's done. It took a while, but I think the result is there. I think it looks good. Now I'm just gonna wash the trim a little bit with Agrax Earthshade, just to give it a little bit of shading, especially here where there's a bend in it or where there's these little nubs sticking out, whatever bolts they might be. Uh, that way you get a little bit of shading in there without changing the color too much. I don't want this to become too dark or too brown. I want it to be fairly bright. And after this, I give it a very light dry brush of silver and particularly the higher parts of the model and the parts I want to have highlighted like the face and the weapons and the shoulder pads. I'm gonna do it very lightly over here and just to make it a little bit shiny and give it a little bit of a highlight. But like this, you don't really change the color of the brass and it still looks like there's a highlight in there. And it will make it just a little bit brighter and will make the red a little bit darker and just make it all pop a little bit more. Now, this brass, of course, needs a little bit of weathering. So next up, just a little bit of Nihilac Oxide, heavily watered down so it's not so bright. And I'm just going to go to a couple of these bolts that are sticking out and trying to get it into some of these nooks and crannies to just have it show up a little bit. And the green from the Oxide will make the red look better, will make it look redder. That's why the butcher puts these fake green leaves between the meat, so the meat looks redder. And with that color contrast, you can get a little bit of extra pop in your miniature. Now I picked the World Eater shoulder pad, so I better also paint the World Eater's icon. And I'm first doing some Kalgar blue for the watery parts and then Caliban green for the land parts. And once this is dry, it's finally time to add some rust and worn out pieces to this armor, which is gonna be very tricky because I might just ruin everything. Now I want a tiny, tiny bit of Typhus Corrosion on the armor. And it's fine if it hits both the red part and the brass part, because that would just show more damage. So I'm getting a nice little speckle pattern going here, and I'm just going to find a few places to once dab with this sponge. And I can't even see the difference, so I need to get a little bit more paint and just three, four places or so, one or two on the shoulder pads, one on the helm, that's all I really need. And it's just to signify the age of the armor. Now, yeah, there we go. And some more here, just to get it a little more grimy. And I'm, I'm being way more careful than I usually am. I was expecting to put a big brown blob on the armor and just ruin it all. But like this, yeah, this works. So I'll just keep going like this bit by bit and get a little bit of dark spots on the armor, also to break up the brass and break up the red a little bit and also to make it look a little bit more grimy. And then we start working on next part of the model, maybe the cloak, less of that. I clean them up a little bit. All the parts that I accidentally hit with the red are now nice and white. And now I'm gonna speed things up a bit because I don't think the next few steps are really that interesting. But I'm gonna paint this cloak very dark with contrast wildwood. And since this is very, very dark brown, it will give a very nice contrast with his white skin and it will set him apart from well, his own created background with this cloak. Uh, so contrast wildwood and now I have to be very careful. I have to make sure I don't hit anything. I don't want to hit the skin or the armor with this. And then after this, I dry brush it with a little bit of Zandri dust just to get the ridges looking a little bit lighter again. And this doesn't need a little detail, but a lot of detail, but I'm just doing a little more than I normally would on most miniatures because he's a character. And after this, it's time to work on some of the steel bits, like the teeth of the chain axe. And I'm using some iron warriors here because it's a nice dark metallic. And then wash it with some non oil for shading and then dry brush with silver for a highlight. And yeah, you'll hit the brass, but that's fine. It will just accentuate the highlight even more. Time for the skin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wash the whole model in non oil. Well, the skin, not the armor. But I'm mixing the non oil with some flow improver. That is kind of like a medium and it makes the non oil act more like a contrast paint, which makes it settle more into the recesses. Now I got this little Coca Cola cap here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of flow improver, a little bit of non oil. And I'm gonna start at the bottom because I don't know how this is gonna work out, but I just wanna make sure that there's shading, but that the skin is still very much white. And usually when you use non oil, it just taints everything a bit black. I hope that with the flow improver, flow, flow improver, it settles into the recesses and it doesn't uh, turn the whole skin black or well, slightly gray is okay, but not black. 
So let's see what this looks like after it dries. And it looks pretty good, if I say so myself. I've got shading in the recesses, but the upper parts are still very much white and not this weird gray that you usually get with Nono. Now I've done a couple of steps off camera. I've painted his nails black, but I've also gave them a little coat of art coat. That's a gloss varnish so that the nails will always look shiny. So they look more like obsidian talons than just nails. And I also did a little bit of black Templar on these hoses that he has sticking out of his skin and around the helmet and so on. Just to skip a couple of steps that are pretty boring to watch because now it's time for streaking grime. And if you've never worked with streaking grime before, I highly recommend it. If you can work with acrylics, you can work with enamels like streaking grime and getting one or two of these enamels in your collection of paints is going to do so much for you, especially if like a little bit of grim dark paint style. So what do I do with streaking grime? Well, I get a little bit of white spirits and get the streaking grime and I'm just going all over the skulls with this and I am getting them all to look very grimy. And this is why I started with white on the skulls because then if I reduce the streaking grime later on, you still get a really nice bright highlight on these skulls, but they will look like they're old and worn and he's been carrying them along with him for a very long time, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm also going to do the base uh, because there's a bunch of skulls on there and that's also to just get a little dust and dirt on the base as well. And as I'm doing the base, I'm also going to do the legs. Now the base has some Basilicanum gray, a contrast paint, just to get those rocks to look a little bit grayer. And now I'm just going to add heavily a uh, load of streaking grime over here. And the beauty of streaking grime is that it has a little bit of green, a little green tint in there, which will contrast nicely with the red of the armor. And of course, the blood and gore effects that are going to come after this. And I'm going to start with some of the basic blood effects. First of all, the axes, of course, need a little bit of streaking blood going into the opposite direction that the axe would go. So if he swings like that, the blood goes that way. So I just have a dry brush here. It's a pretty old one. And I'm just moving against the axe like this, just to get a little bit of blood on the teeth. Same over here, there's a nice spike. Let's give that a little bit of a bloody tip. And then this here, a little bit of blood effects here and there. Not too much, don't put too much on your brush or you just get a massive streak and that's not really what I want. I don't want big blood surfaces all over the mini. I want some blood splatter and I'm gonna make some actual gore as well. Now, some of this, of course, on the skin. That's one of the reasons why the skin is white is that the blood effects are going to show up really nicely. So with this very old dry brush, I can get some blood splatter going like this, like that. Just get a little, free, little bit here and there. Just a few droplets that are falling off whenever he swings at something. Hands are good, the same as the straps that are stuck to the weapon, because if he's hitting something, then I'm sure his hand is the first thing that gets covered in the blood. And I'll just keep going like this, with pretty subtle little dabs of blood here and there. Especially on the skin, a little bit on the armor. And then, gonna do some big gore chunks and streaks with some Uhu glue that you can buy at any stationery shop mixed with a bit of blood for the blood god and you've got to work pretty fast with this so that you can draw strings out of it after you first glue it onto whatever surface you want to start with so like this you can draw nice long strings and you get chunks stuck to the axe and i'm going to see if i can draw some more strings here between the hand and the armor for example i mean this guy just swung and took the head off of something to offer it to corn and of course that shows after the swung swing as well and this is what he looks like when he's finished. I'm actually really proud of this kit bash and the paint scheme as well. Normally my painting is pretty simple, pretty rough. I call it the simple grimdark style with some dry brush and some washes. And I'm happy that I did a little bit more for this guy. He really looks like a master of executions dedicated to corn. Of course, world eaters, but he could also fit nicely into a Black Legion army when you want to coronate master of executions. Now I'm getting more and more into kit bashing and if you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy this kit bashing video as well.